So, this is a third talk on mindfulness of oneself. And uh, so what are we mindful of in the self? And one of the things I talked about yesterday is we can be mindful, become aware of all the selfing that goes on, all the activities of constructing a self, asserting a self, defending a self, uh, attaching to ideas of self, acquiring ideas of self. Uh, We acquire ideas of who we are and in that sense kind of put on a coat or a clothes of self with those ideas. And there can be layers and layers of these coats that we wear of different selves. And some of it's done quite, I don't know if innocently or easily or someone tells us something like I was told in seventh grade by a te- by art teacher that I just casually as I was drawing on my desk that I had no artistic ability and I, I didn't there was no sting to that there was no idea that I should have artistic ability it just was a simple ordinary fact of the universe since it came from a teacher and that became a coat that I wore I'm a person who have no artistic ability and and uh, it was a, held lightly and but I didn't know any better and turned out I had some. When I went to college, I discovered it and took art classes and things. And, um, and so someone, we have some experience in our life that is maybe we do something that hurts someone, we make a mistake. And that becomes a coat that we wear that now I am this kind of terrible person. And, and that one event then becomes this heavy coat that you know, we apply everywhere, we go everywhere with the idea I'm a terrible person. Or, or someone uh, uh, raises us with lots of uh, self-esteem and telling us how great we are. And so we put on this coat that I'm great. And then we end up as an adult in situations where uh, it's, uh, work or school or something that is um, really tough for us, really hard. And Maybe we fail or don't do it. We do poor, we do poorly, and that challenges this idea that of self-esteem. And suddenly, we thought we were a certain way, but it turns out maybe we're we're not the way we thought we were. And that coat was really heavy, and it's hard to take off. So it's we carry it around, uh, hurting, being angry or something. And so this idea of <clears throat> selfing, we have these ideas and attachments and to me, myself, and mine. The, in uh, in uh, teachings of the Buddha, uh, the idea of self, any kind of idea of a self, idea of self, is seen as an idea, is seen as a concept. And the word for that is sanya. And sanya is, um, uh, is um, uh, usually translated into English as perception. But perception in English suggests kind of a innocent, neutral, uh, pure, kind of taking in a sight, a sound, just as it is. But the sanya word implies not just the, not only the, not the taking in the sens- sensory perception of it, but once there's a sens- sensory perception, then there is um, a label, an idea, a concept of what that is. And sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not. So like the example I gave a few weeks ago maybe is of seeing, a, a hiking in the trails up here and seeing a, a, a root poking out of the ground or a stick on the ground kind of curving like a snake. And I first see it as a snake. My mind now has made a concept of snake that wasn't there. And um, so this idea of the conceptualization and uh, in modern terms, it's projection. Uh, we also project. So I projected the idea of a snake on that little twig. And um, so it turns out for the Buddha, uh, the ideas of self, notions of self, um, what, what, we, what we, many of us perceive innocently or not so innocently perceive as self, which is really through the filter of these ideas, these constructions, um, are, can be seen as projections. We project self on things, on ourselves, project certain kinds of selves on other people. And uh, one place to see it 
is um, if you go to, you know, uh, someone's house for maybe a little party and dinner party and and um, at other times of COVID-19 maybe and and you, um, there's a bunch, bunch, bunch of people around, it's time to go sit down and you take a seat and you sit there, but then you excuse yourself to maybe to go do something and and then you come back three minutes later and lo and behold, um, someone is sitting in your seat. There are other chairs around and you hadn't touched the plate or anything there. Uh, you hadn't used anything, so other places are just as clean and ready for you as where you were. But um, they're in your seat. And then there might be anger, self-righteousness, despair, discouragement, um, uh, uh, possessiveness. Wait a minute, that's my chair. And uh, maybe going over there and telling the person, excuse me, but this is my chair. And... Um, but if, uh, uh, you know, if someone hadn't taken that chair, if you just sat there for the time, and then you left, and some weeks later, someone, you came back, and someone said, which is your chair? Oh, I don't know. I don't care. I don't sit, I'll sit anywhere. Um, before you came to the house, that chair was not your chair. But somehow the mind makes it mine in some way or other. And that making it mine is a projection. Um, if you took off your shoes before coming to the house, with, you know, as you came into the entryway of the house, everyone took their shoes off. And then uh, uh, if everyone left with different shoes than they came with, the shoes wouldn't care. Uh, there's a projection of self, mine, onto the shoes. And it's practical value to, to be able to put on the shoes which you, you fit you when you leave. So it's good to have some conventional sense of mine. But these are projections. And um, so uh, if someone is a, has a profession, like maybe a person's a plumber, um, and uh, other people might see at the, at the same party, uh, oh, that's a plumber. And, they, and so they're projecting plumberhood on that person. And so if something's uh, clogged up in the sink in the kitchen, they go find the friend who's a plumber. Because that's, you know, and that's innocent enough to have that. But some people project that on themselves. Some profession, some role, some idea, they have to be this kind of person. And so in the teachings of the Buddha, uh, the idea of self is considered, in modern terms, a projection. Sometimes he calls it an upside-down projection. Uh, Topsy-turvy, some translators call it. Um, uh, idea, the idea of a self because it tends to limit people. It tends to be a magnet for all kinds of um, suffering, all kinds of stress, all kinds of other ideas, associations of what a self, a good self, a bad self is, how we should be. And um, so, you know, I was told, you know, that I had no artistic ability, and so I was now a person with no artistic ability in my mind, in my projection. But then um, I might have gone a little bit further in life and, and, uh, and maybe I went to a class where they said, you know, uh, we, you, know, uh, uh, you know, of course everyone has artistic ability and we want to celebrate everyone's artistic ability, but I've gotten this idea that I have none. And so suddenly uh, my idea goes counter to how you're, I'm supposed to be, a, a successful good person is supposed to have artistic ability and I know I don't because I was told, and now this gets more complicated, and, and now other selves get formed, other projections. Now I'm an inadequate self because of I'm not fitting in to the artistic ability thing that I'm supposed to have. And so now I'm, pro now I'm projecting something. And these projections sometimes are acquired, internalized from what people say around us and treat us, and sometimes they're just born out of us. Um, like, for example, the chair, that's my, my chair. Um, you know, that we, get la we can get quite attached to that for a few moments, a few minutes for the dinner. And so uh, becoming more sensitive to the, I, the, the activity of selfing is one of the functions of mindfulness. In that sense, uh, in the more kind of, in some ways, in a more kind of uh, basic way, the, uh, the Buddha never really asked, asked the question, uh, who am I? 
what he asked is, uh, well, he didn't ask literally, but more what he, his spirit of his instructions are, not discovering who you are, but to discover what you're doing. And sometimes for some of us, the question maybe more appropriately is, what in the world are you doing? What are we doing? What are the activity of the mind? What are the projections of the mind uh, that we're involved in? And this is where meditation becomes very important because um, as we meditate, we get calmer, quieter, more. And as we quiet down, we start seeing the activity of selfing more and more. We see the thought, we see the idea, we see the judgment, we see how a thought comes up and how we latch, latch onto it or, or hold it or are troubled by it or pushed around by it. So, for example, so, um, uh, so as we get quieter and quieter, we can see more and more subtle, more and more basic and foundational uh, projections of self that we've been living with. This is not a rejection of any kind of idea that there is a self, whatever that might be, uh, especially if we don't have thoughts to answer the question. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a rejection of it. It's not a claim that there is no self. But uh, it's a idea that um, a lot of what, we, what, it, what self is for people is an activity of the mind that projects and creates ideas and concepts and even feelings around this thing that we identify as self. So it's subtle, it can be more and more subtle, and subtle doesn't mean inconsequential, it's actually sometimes more consequential when you go down the layers to the places where we usually don't see. So if the activity, if the agitation or activity level of the mind, it can be rated from one to 10, and mostly we're going around at a level of 10, uh, then uh, there's you know layers in the mind, and so subtler things that are more active at a level of three are not seen because they're kind of covered over. It's like the agitated waves on top of a lake prevent us from seeing what's deeper down. Where it's, uh, maybe there's a swirl of fish that are swirling around, or maybe there's an underwater current that's swirling around that you could see if you could see look through the the, the top of the lake, and you can see the this the grass underneath, the seaweed kind of moving. But then uh, when uh, even that gets quieter, then you see, oh, in fact, that in between the grass, there's little quiet slugs moving around very softly. So you start seeing more and more as things get quieter, you see the quieter things. So if, there's a, if selfing is an activity level number three, you don't see it if you're busy in life on level nine, one to 10. But if your mind gets quiet enough that it gets to a level two, then you see more clearly uh, overall the minds are two, but you see kind of the movements of three. You see how it's born, how it appears, how it, it goes. And to be able to watch the projections, the ideas, the concepts of self appear out of nothing in a sense that we were minding our own business and suddenly there's a thought that I'm X. And where did that come from? And is that true? And that's a thought. Who am I if I don't use that thought to say who I am? So part of what Buddhist practice is about is quieting down so we can find, see through and uh, this, these projections of self, see what they are, see them clearly. Some of them are useful. Some of them are useful clo- coats to put on when for the circumstance. And so to start seeing them as being provisional, uh, seeing them as being contextual, seeing them as something that we have choice about what we pick up and put down is part of the freedom of Buddhism. And also part of the freedom is to put them down completely and to have an experience of ourselves, of being free, being alive, being vital, um, being upright, uh, maybe even a certain kind of strength, um, but without any projections of self, any associations on it, that, that makes things so much more complicated so quickly if we're attached to it, if we're caught in it. So, projections of self. So, I think that all of you are pretty wonderful. That's what I've seen. I've seen a lot of people over my lifetime, and as a teacher, I get to meet people in all kinds of ways. And, um, and it's a wonderfulness that you can discover 
for yourself uh, if you can put down, take off some of the projection coats that you've overlaid on top of your wonderfulness. Thank you.